in the last stream, we were working on getting started with the FTB industrial contraptions mod, and we set up this little cluster of machines here with the rolling machine, the basic generator, the reprocessor, the compressor, and the macerator. We also repurposed our create deployers over here to allow us to produce the three different tiers of circuit from FTB industrial contraptions. And the plan for today's episode, or should I say one of the plans for today's episode, is going to be to finally get antimatter production up and running because antimatter is going to be a key component of the late game for us. We also managed to get our first draconium ingot, and so we're also going to work today on getting the draconic evolution fusion crafting up and running and using that to craft some late game items. However, before we start with any of that, the first thing that I would like to work on in today's stream is upgrading our current source of EMC generation. Because right now we have these three magenta power flowers, which combined with the watches of flowing time here are producing 208,000 EMC per second for us, which is good but not great. We're at 3.12 billion EMC in total in the top left there, which might seem like a lot, but we're not too far away from the end of the mod pack here. And the end of the mod pack requires that we craft at least one of these infinity ingots. Of course, once we have one, we should then be able to duplicate the infinity ingots with the refined radiance. But in order to craft this infinity ingot, we need four infinity catalysts. And to get four infinity catalysts, we need all of these items here. Some of them are quite expensive. For example, uh, we do have all of these singularities. The singularities are made up of lots of smaller items. So this item here requires that we put in 15,000 blocks of iron. That in and of itself, not too expensive, but we do have to do that four times. And then we have items like the final star shard here, which requires three quadrillion, 377 trillion, 699 billion, 720 million, 667,136 EMC. And again, we need four of those. And so, we're going to have to up our EMC production game quite a bit. And so what I think I'm going to do right at the start of today's episode is kind of just continue on down this crafting chain right here. We've got to the magenta power flowers. We can go all the way up to the final power flower, which is the Mark 16. We're currently at the Mark 4. And I don't think we're going to make our way all the way up to the final power flower. This one is staggeringly expensive and produces 48 trillion uh, EMC per second. But I do think that we can go further than where we are currently at. And even if we didn't upgrade, we could definitely look at getting even more of these magenta flowers because we do now currently have the ability to make 79 actually of the higher tier flowers. So even if we did nothing else, we could just take some of the higher tier flowers and throw those down. And already we're going to see a massive increase in the amount of EMC that we generate. And of course we can put down a ton of these, but I think that we should take this even further. And so we're basically going to do the same thing we did previously, where we just craft up the higher tiers of matter, craft those into the higher tiers of collector and the higher tiers of relay, and then craft those relays and collectors with the previous tier flower. And we're going to do that over and over and over again as we move up the uh, different colors uh, until we get to the highest one that we can make with the current amount of EMC that we have. Okay, so I got all the way up to lime matter. If I type in matter here, I shift clicked in all of the different recipes. It was basically a case of just shift clicking in this, moving this into here, and then doing the same again. You shift click in the recipe for blue and then move that in and then repeat the process all the way up until you don't have enough EMC to make the next tier of matter. For us, that was lime. This requires 3.2 billion. We have lime matter available. We don't have enough EMC to make the yellow or higher tier matters just yet. And the same is true for the power flowers. It was just a case of teaching the antimatter relay, teaching the energy collector, and then teaching the flower, and then rinse and repeat. We got up to tier eight, which is uh, this guy right here. And we can make one tier eight power flower because it costs just over two billion. And so now we can take this and we can place it down. And currently the server is running fairly well. We're running at 20 ticks per second, which is the, uh, the standard Minecraft rate. I am going to look at pushing this just a little bit further because basically the more of these pedestals and the more of these watches that we put down, the more likely it is that we start to run into server instability. But I kind of want to push it just a little further to see how fast we can get our EMC coming in. Right now we're producing 20.18 million EMC per second, but uh, the more of these that we add, the laggier it's going to get, but the faster we're going to generate EMC, which I think is, of course, ideal. And so if we go ahead and throw a few more of these down. I think we're still 
Yeah, we're still rocking at 20 ticks per second, but we're almost at 100 million EMC per second now, which is a substantial upgrade of what we saw previously. The pouch here, I don't think I can pouch with this, can I? I don't think so. You can, I think, pouch the pedestal that the watch is on, and that does increase the time. That, to me, does feel like a recipe for server <laughs> instability if we do that, but I don't really want to do that simply due to the fact that we don't have that much time in our pouch, and I do like to use this kind of um, just around the base on stuff that we don't really want to move a watch over to. Right now, though, this is doing okay. Let me, um, and to be fair, I think we can maybe upgrade to the next tier of power flower. We totally can. Let me pick this up, and let's see if we can't do the cyan power flower. We totally can. Let me put the old one away, and let's put the cyan power flower down. That's going to take us up to 308 million EMC per second, a pretty big upgrade over the 200,000 EMC per second that we were generating at the start of the episode. Can we get a few more watches? We definitely can now that we've got even more EMC in our system. Let's keep on going here. I think I wouldn't recommend this at home. I would recommend just kind of putting these down and making more of the flowers, but this seems to be holding just fine. And again, I think we're probably closing in on the point where we can maybe look at upgrading to the green power flower here. We definitely can. Let me take the uh, cyan one out. Let's go back to our arcane transmutation tablet. Let's throw that in the middle. And then let's see, do we have what it takes to make green? We do. We just need to make the uh, green relays like so and the green energy collector like so. And that should be the green power flower. It is lovely. Let's throw that down and let's see how much, are we crossing the billion mark yet? Are we getting 1 billion EMC per second? We are indeed. We're up at uh, 2.15 billion EMC per second and the next year after this is 57 billion which really should not take us too long to get to especially when we have this many watches of flowing time all accelerating this power flower okay so i just made two yellow power flowers place those down for less than a minute and i've just quickly crafted up the yellow orange white and fading matters we have enough emc now to make at least one fading matter and so i've taught all of those to our transmutation tablet and so now we should be able to do the orange energy collector and the orange relay and i'm fairly certain that we should be able to make our orange power flower here we can indeed we can make four of them if we want uh, the fact that we can make four of them kind of leads me to believe that i think we could probably go straight up to the white power flower here we just have that much emc coming in so let's do the white collector let's do the white relay and let's craft up the white power flower we can make just the one of those and if we whack it down like so we're going to see a staggering amount of emc and i said i don't think we're going to be able to get up to the final power flower but i think we might be able to the final power flower does cost a lot of emc like a staggering amount there's a big jump between these two in terms of the amount of uh, emc required but we're generating half a trillion emc per second currently and the next one here requires just five trillion so i think we can go straight up to fading actually let's pick you up we don't necessarily need to pick these up of course but it just gives us a bit of emc back which we can then spend on making the higher tier flowers so we'll do fading relays and we'll do the fading flower and we can make four of these and so going up from fading to final is a jump from four trillion to 27 quadrillion so it's a massive jump in terms of the amount required and so for now let's go ahead and just grab four of these i guess let's put all of those down like this within the radius of all of our watches of flowing time we're now generating almost 10 maybe just over 10 just under 10 8.79 trillion emc per second and we need to get up to 27 quadrillion before we can make the final power flower and in doing so we're gonna basically double from 19 trillion emc per second up to uh, 48 just over double in total this might actually take a little while not like a crazy long time but it's gonna take slightly longer than the previous ones have taken just because we're currently not even close to a quadrillion we're only about a quarter of the way there and we need 27 quadrillion in order to upgrade and so we'll come back to that later in the episode while we wait for that let's come back over here and let's see if we can't get this antimatter production up and running so to get to the antimatter production we need the antimatter constructor which requires the singularity which requires the matter condenser and to get the matter condenser we need to complete these quests along the right hand side of the quest book and so between streams i have done a little bit more in the way of fluix crystal crafting we got one stack of fluix crystals here they're super easy to make nether quartz charged soda quartz and redstone and then you just fill these up with buckets of water and this is why i want to keep time in my pouch because we can use the pouch here to make this just a little bit faster and then continually fill this back up with water to make a bunch of fluix crystals and i think 
if I'm not mistaken, in order to make this guy right here, the 128 cubed spatial storage component, I think we're going to need four stacks of Fluix crystals because the 128 component requires four of the 16 component, that requires four of the two component, and that requires four Fluix pearls, which requires four Fluix crystals. And so we've got four multiplied by four, which is 16, multiplied by four, which is 64, multiplied by four, which is four stacks. And so I believe that we require four stacks of these. We have two, which is a good start, and getting two more stacks should be very easy for us. It is basically a case of grabbing two stacks of Sutter Quartz crystals, throwing those on underneath the Tesla coil to get charged into the charged Sutter Quartz. And then it's also just a case of grabbing two stacks of redstone along with two stacks of nether quartz and then just dropping all of that into our basin with some water to get those Fluix crystals. Once we have those Fluix crystals, the only other thing that's going to be tricky, I think, is getting the Fluix dust because the Fluix dust here is basically the same setup, but it requires that we throw the items in water. And again, I think we're going to need to get the same number. So four stacks of Fluix dust. And so we're going to want to get two stacks of redstone, two stacks of charged soda quartz, and two stacks of nether quartz. And so let me quickly do that. Do we have more nether quartz? We do. Do we have more redstone? We do. And we have the ability, of course, to charge up two more stacks of soda quartz. And we'll do all of that over on here. And then we'll put all of the soda quartz, redstone, and nether quartz into their respective places. And that should get us everything to make all of these storage components. And at that point, we can look at making this uh, singularity, which is required for the antimatter relay, but we also need a ton of them for the final infinity ingot craft, because right here, we also need these guys right here, these matter clusters. Each matter cluster requires 40,000 singularities, and we need five of these per infinity catalyst and four infinity catalysts. So 20 multiplied by 40,000. We need a lot of singularities. And so we're gonna want to set something up that makes them pretty fast. All right, so there is four stacks of Fluix crystals. And then over here, if we do one, two, three, I'm, uh, oh, I was hopeful that would work. I guess it's just gonna uh, throw it out because the fan is on. Interesting, if I just quickly rotate that fan like that, can I then safely use this as a pool of water for this to work in? I cannot, that's because it's got soul sand underneath. I see it's not the, um, the fan that's causing the problem there. That is my bad, thankfully. We do have this uh, lovely little river underneath our platform here. And so if we do something like this, that should get us our first set of Fluix dust. And then we can do the same thing again here. Boom, boom, and boom. And I think that should also get us even more Fluix dust. I think that might be enough, actually. I've got one more set here. It's time to see if my calculations uh, were indeed correct. It looks like I've got one set too many. That's fine, we can put those away for future use, at least we can put the charged Sirtis Quartz away, the rest can go back into the Arcane Tablet. And so now I think we should have everything that we need in order to make these spatial cells. So we need the two cubed, the 16 cubed, and the 128 cubed spatial components. And so let's see if we can't make the two cubed here. Of course, we are going to need some engineering processes for this. Annoyingly, the engineering processes don't have an EMC of their own. Thankfully, we do have 56 of these printed engineering circuits. We also have redstone and we have printed silicon. We also have the ability, of course, to print even more silicon should we need it. And of course, we do also have our even faster inscriber now. And so uh, let's quickly get a little bit more in the way of printed silicon. And I really don't think we're going to need that many of these engineering circuits. So let's do this. Let's take these out and let's see if we can't start crafting these components. So we need, I believe, 16 of the two cubed components to then craft four of the 16 cubed components to then craft one of the 128 cubed components. And so we need, I guess, at least 16 of these guys, which we do now have. We also need to get, of course, uh, quite a few of these Fluix pearls. We're basically gonna craft everything we have into ideally four stacks of these Fluix pearls. Never mind, I thought they would stack like ender pearls, but uh, we just need one stack in that case. Uh, ender pearls, of course, only stack to 16, which I thought was gonna be the same for these pearls. Alas, not the case, that's fine. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 of those. And then that is gonna be fine in terms of crafting the 16 cubed variant, but for that, we're going to need four of these processes. And so once again, let's do something like this. And I think that's actually all we're gonna need. Let's take one more of those. That's going to let us craft four of these, one, two, three, four. And then that should be everything to craft one of these. It is. Nice. And so now the meta condenser here, what do we need for this guy? For this guy, we need a lot of stuff that we don't currently have. We need two iridium circuits, which we did make in the last episode. We've got four of those ready to go. We also need four iridium plates. We also made these 
in the last episode. I'm fairly certain that we have Iridium chunks available to us. We do, we can go ahead and uh, macerate those into dust and then smelt them using the arc furnace into Iridium ingots. And then we can use the uh, rolling machine, I believe, to turn them into plates. That is completely fine. Let's take a full stack of those. Let's run all of those through the macerator, which is now getting a passive benefit as well from those extra watches of flowing time. And then we can go ahead and smelt these down in our alchemical reaction chamber. Again, this guy can be made faster with the temporal pouch. At some point we should look at grabbing the sanguine reverter here and holding it in our inventory a little bit to allow it to uh, replenish its number of uses just so that we don't have to uh, continually remake more of those going forward. And then over here, we can do this to get those iridium plates nice and quickly. Perfect. On top of that, we need two component heat vents. These require iron bars, tin plates, and a heat vent. The heat vent requires industrial grade metal, which we should have, as well as iron bars and a copper coil. The copper coil here is made with copper wire and an iron rod. Okay, the copper wire, easy enough, and the iron rod, also easy enough, perfect. Okay, in that case, let me quickly see if we can't make a few of these. So we'll make a couple of these, and then it will also do the same for the iron rod recipe as well. We are gonna have to head on back over to our bioforge to make this happen. I do want to have this iron rod because it's much, much easier to craft. The Twitch chat is right here that the Sanguine Reverter does have an EMC value. Let me put that in there just in case so that in the future we can just grab another one of those. We don't have to worry too much about repairing it. That is perfect. And so over in the Bioforge down here, we should be able to make copper coils. Assuming that we have nutrients inside of the forge itself, which we can do, of course, with our nutrient bars. You would think. We can. Nice, I'll take a few of these. Not quite sure how many we're going to need. We got five though. I don't think we need five for this craft. We definitely don't. We just need two of these in order to craft two of these. For that, we do need some tin plates. I am somewhat sure that we can make tin plates using our press, although apparently that is not correct. It looks like we will have to use the rolling machine for that as well. Although to be fair, the rolling machine might actually be faster than using the, uh, the mechanical press from create, especially at this point in the pack. And so can I make two of these? I can, beautiful. That just leaves us with the 128 cubed spatial storage cell, which is the previously made spatial component with some iron, some redstone, and some quartz glass. We are just missing the iron and the quartz glass by the looks of it. Quartz glass is actually easy enough to make. Did we teach our system quartz glass. We didn't, however, we are able to craft the quartz glass inside of our tablet and then teach it. And then from there, we should be able to craft up this guy as soon as we grab the 128 cubed spatial component. Boom, and boom. All right, chat, I think that's everything for the matter condenser. And the matter condenser here is what's going to allow us to make the singularity. So let me throw this down, maybe right about here. Now, in order for this to work, in order to make the singularity, we are going to have to get a 64K ME storage component. To make the 64K ME storage component, this guy right here, we're going to have to craft up three 16K storage components. Each one of those requires three 4K storage components, and each one of those requires three 1K storage components. And so we need a couple of 1K storage components that we can then craft up. As you can see, we also need a lot of calculation processes, which is completely fine. Uh, we do have the calculation press that is on us. And of course we have the ability to grab an infinite amount of Certus Quartz, which we can go and throw into our inscriber. If we do something like this and this, that's gonna get us the printed calculation circuits. Whilst we wait for that, the only other thing we're going to need really is some logic processes. Other than that, it's mostly just a case of crafting all of that up. And in fact, I think logic processes might be the thing that we need the most of, not calculation processes. And so let's grab our logic press and our logic circuits, I guess. Uh, let's also grab some more silicon out of here because I think silicon is really gonna be the limiting factor. And let's quickly make some more processes. And a good number of logic and calculation processes later, we should, I think, just be able to run through the, uh, the crafting process here. Let me just make a stack of those, or really as many as we can. And then let's craft those up into their 4K variants. This time we're not gonna quite make as many as we can. I think nine 
should do the trick. From there, we can make three 16s, and with the three 16s, we can make the one 64K component. Nice. Okay, so now that we have that, we can place it over into the meta condenser. And if we change this here, right now it's set to ME condenser output. We want to change this to condense into singularities. This requires 256,000 per item. And so essentially, what we need to do now is we need to pick an item, something like cobblestone is uh, maybe the cheapest item that we can produce. And we need to put that cobblestone into here. And as we do, it will start to fill up the cell. Once the cell is full, it will produce a singularity. Thankfully, the storage component here is not used up in the process. So you can use this again and again and again. It's just a matter of pumping enough items into the condenser. And for that, I think we want to look at these uh, EMC links. So EMC links are pretty easy to make. And uh, there's a few tiers here. We're going to craft all the way up to potentially the highest tier, which I think is the compressed EMC link. I actually don't know if we need the highest tier or not. The lower tiers might do the job just fine. But uh, you know what? Let me try it with just a basic EMC link. The basic one here says you can use this block to add EMC to your transmutation table using collectors. So I think the idea with this is you place it down, you place the collectors down around it like we did with the energy condenser earlier. And instead of putting that EMC into the energy condenser, it will put it into your transmutation table, which is more beneficial. The next tier up though is interesting because this one is basically the same, but it also allows you to import and export items. And so we want to get a personal EMC link, this thing right here. If we put this down like that, inside of here, we can specify what we want this to output. Specifically for us, we want to output something nice and cheap like cobblestone. And so if we put that cobblestone into the output slot, I think that's right. We can then get ourselves a pipe item pipe to be specific. We can place that down. We can get ourselves a pipe upgrade. We've made all of those in a previous episode and they do all have an EMC. We're gonna go for the ultimate pipe upgrade. And then what we're going to do is using our wrench, we're gonna set this to extract. We're gonna put the ultimate pipe upgrade in. Let me just check already, is this working? It is, you'll see right now it's transferring four items every 20 ticks, four items every second. If we put this in, like so, it's now transferring 64 items every tick, which is substantially faster, and it's gonna very quickly get us up to that 256,000 number. But I believe we can take it further. First things first, if I press F3B, none of this is inside of our watch of flowing time radius. If I were to move this in such a way that the pipe was inside of the watch of flowing time radius, I think it would extract incredibly quickly. For example, if I did this, and you know what, let's say this, we're gonna kind of run it down this way. It's a much longer pipe, of course, but it really only matters where the uh, the export connection is like that. I also do think that we just deleted a watch of flowing time by accident, but that's completely fine. In here, let's uh, once again, so this is the cobblestone. People are saying that you can just click and drag from JEI, which you totally can. And again, let's go ahead and swap this out for the ultimate pipe upgrade. That, as you can see, is substantially faster. Now, that's good enough for today because I think we only need the one singularity in order to make the antimatter constructor. However, what we could do later on is we could also look at making this infinity pipe upgrade, which is a bit expensive in that it requires an iridium circuit. Uh, the iridium circuits were a bit of a pain to make in the last episode, but the infinity pipe upgrade is basically a creative pipe upgrade. It can move a staggering number of items at a time, even faster than we're currently doing right now. And so I don't think, especially with the infinity pipe upgrade, it should be too difficult for us to get the tens, if not hundreds of thousands of singularities that are going to be required to get the infinity catalyst made in a future episode. For now though, we need to make an advanced machine block to make this antimatter constructor. To make the advanced machine block, we need more copper coils. Good thing we made some more earlier, along with two advanced alloys, which I think we also might have done previously. I think we might have some more of these left over. I'm hopeful we do, as well as two carbon plates and a machine block. Okay, let's have a look here. Do we have any of the stuff required to make this? The answer is actually yes, we've got most of the stuff. So a regular machine block is easy enough. We've made a few of those. The only thing that we're missing is one carbon plate and one copper coil. Both of those should be pretty doable. The carbon plate, of course, just being coal dust. And so we'll just take another stack of coal, run that through the old macerator over here. Again, this is much faster now than it used to be. Very happy to see that. And then as far as the copper coil goes here, we just need more of the uh, copper wire and more of the iron rods. And I think we might wanna grab more of both of those. The copper wire, thankfully, does have an EMC value. And so we can just do a quick one of these, of course. I do wish it didn't clear your text field every time you try to craft something, but 
for the most part, it's not too bad. And so down here, can I make a couple more of these? I totally can. Lovely. Still like the animation on that stuff. It looks great. Up here, we have our cold dust and we'll just do one of these to get those. And then we'll do one of these to get these. And then we just put this in the compressor. That is indeed correct. The compressor is of course the last machine that I check and fantastic. So that should be everything for the advanced machine block quest complete. And then from there, we just need to get the antimatter constructor, which is unfortunately two advanced machine blocks with four iridium plates, two iridium circuits, and one singularity. We have the iridium circuits, we have the singularity, we have one of the advanced machine blocks, and we have the iridium plates. So we just need to make one more advanced machine block here, and we are going to be good to go. And in fact, surprisingly, we have what it takes. Nice. And is that everything? It is indeed everything for the antimatter constructor. So now that we have the antimatter constructor, we should be able to make antimatter. I'm fairly certain that we should be able to do this. The, the only trouble that we might run into is potentially one of power, because right now the LV cable here is capable of a max input of 32 energy units per tick. We need potentially the highest tier cable. Yeah, we need the IV cable here right up at the top to make this happen because this can transfer 8,192 power units per tick, which is the amount that this can provide. So what well, to be fair actually though, it says energy usage is one power unit. So if I put this down, I believe that for this to work, I think we might have to put scrap into here. Yes, yeah, it says put scrap inside to speed it up. So if we get scrap, which unfortunately, again, I don't think has an EMC value, it doesn't. And we can get this, from our reprocessor, which we do have. It's this guy right here. And uh, do we have any scrap left over from before? We have some scrap. Can I put the scrap in just as is? I can, and that is gonna make it faster, but I think that we wanna make this much, much faster than it currently is. It also says that it's not getting power. That is because it's not getting power, Isaac, because you've not put any fuel in there. There we go. Okay, this is much better. Okay, this is good. Uh, let me F3B this. So this is working. Because the coal generator now is being accelerated to such an insane speed, this is actually working and is producing stuff. And my thought process here is that we might be able to make something happen. If we put the reprocessor here, and if we get another one of the uh, EMC links, I think what we should be able to do, it doesn't really matter which one we get here, uh, I just want to be able to pump cobblestone into the reprocessor. So let's do... Ooh, how do I want to do this is a good question. So if I move this, and I move this, and maybe even move this, I kind of want everything to be inside of the radius of our watches of flowing time to make them as fast as possible. Essentially, if we put that there, that means that we can put the reprocessor here. We could then pipe into that reprocessor if we grab some more of our item pipes, like this, from an EMC link that we put down right about here. Again, just like before, it really doesn't matter what we pump in so long as we pump in something and so if we do this and if we grab another one of those pipe upgrades again we'll go for ultimate and boom that should start moving this over it does indeed we also probably want to do the same thing on the other end if we get another uh, personal emc link because uh, also let me get another pipe upgrade so we can use that in a second but uh, if we get another personal emc link we can automate the sending of coal over into the basic generator so if we do something like this and then in here, instead of doing cobblestone, we can do coal. And that's just gonna pull the coal directly out of our transmutation tablet and it's gonna pump it around into the generator. Like so, that's gonna keep all this going. And then over here, this is filling up with scrap that's being made quite quickly. And then we can do the same again when we kind of pull that scrap from here round into here. And that's gonna accelerate the speed at which we make the antimatter. The only thing we don't really seem to have here is enough power, surprisingly. However, I think we can probably get more power fairly easily. If we make another basic generator here, which we might be able to do, we should then be able to just slap that down on top of the pre-existing generator. This is probably easier done over in here, at least for the iron furnace. Let's make a few of those just in case we end up wanting more. And then let's do something like this and like this. And do we have another LV cable? We do. Nice. These are emc -able, thankfully. And let's do something like this. That's going to receive even more coal, produce even more power, and make even more scrap to produce even more antimatter. And so this is working. The reason why I'm kind of pushing this even further, though, is that we need a lot of antimatter. And I mean 
a lot <laughs> of antimatter because if we take a bit of a look forward, first of all, let me do uh, this and this. I was gonna pull all the antimatter out and store it in this drawer, which is perfect. And it seems like the, the, the trouble actually might just be the, um, the speed at which scrap is coming in here. We can also make overclockers. Overclockers here are kind of the default speed upgrade for industrial contraptions. However, they do look to be a little bit, I was gonna say expensive, but they're really not. I thought the uh, small coolant cell here might've been more expensive than, um, than it was. How many circuits do we have left? We've got 11 circuits left. In that case, it used to be the case that you could put up to three of these into any given setup. Let me do something like that. And then let's do something like this. Not quite sure why that craft isn't working here. Also not quite sure why the small coolant cell doesn't have any MC value either. That also doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense given that the, um, the fluid cell here does. But either way, let's grab some tin just directly out of the tablet. And then in our normal crafting table, can I do this? Oh, the Twitch chat might be right here actually. It does say it needs nuclear reactor component. It needs coolant 10,000. I see. So we need to fill a fluid cell with water and then we need to separate it into coolant. Okay. In that case, I kind of think this is probably not worth it. I think it would make more sense for us to just make more of the reprocessors and have a second one on top here producing even more cobblestone. But as I was saying a second ago, the reason for this is that if we look ahead a little bit at the chaos shard, the chaos shard is usually acquired by fighting the chaos dragon. The chaos dragon is a horrible boss fight. As it says right here, if you don't want to do it, there is uh, an alternative way that you can do it if you have a skill issue. I definitely do have a skill issue. And so the alternative here is this recipe for the tiny chaos fragment. The tiny chaos fragment does have an EMC value. And so once you have one tiny chaos fragment, you can craft nine of those into a small chaos fragment. Nine of the small chaos fragments makes a large chaos fragment and nine large chaos fragments makes a chaos shard. The one tiny chaos fragment though is quite an expensive recipe. It requires a trillion redstone flux, which is fine, actually. It's the easiest part of the recipe, but it also requires a ton of these antimatter crystals. Each one of these is made in the Bioforge with 512 antimatter. And so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, I think. I think we need 52. I think it's 13 by four. And so we need 52 of these antimatter crystals and multiply that by 512, we need 26,624 antimatter, which is not as bad as it might seem initially. We're already at 150 antimatter, which is still obviously kind of an order of magnitude away from where we need to be, but it's not too far. Let me put some draw upgrades in here to allow us to get uh, enough space to actually hold all of the shards that we need. But um, for the most part, it should just be a case of putting down even more reprocesses because you'll notice that as soon as any scrap does make its way in here it does really jump in terms of the uh, the power throughput there which is pretty good it's also possible that just making more generators might help as well and so let me quickly look at making this setup faster by kind of duplicating what we already have okay so i've doubled up on reprocessors and i've upgraded to five basic generators in total now and it's coming in pretty quickly not Staggeringly quickly, but we're at almost 700. The matter's coming in quite consistently, and I really don't think it's going to take us that long to get up to the 26,000 that we need in order to make the the chaos shard. And we can always look at making this even faster because we can still, if we need to, add even more of these uh, watches of flowing time to really push this to the extreme. While we wait though for that to come in, let's take a look at this draconic evolution fusion crafting. For this, we need to make the fusion crafting core, which is fairly straightforward. And then we start with these draconium fusion crafting injectors. So the fusion crafting core requires diamonds, lapis, and a draconium core. The draconium core is gonna be our first use of the draconium ingots that we got in the last episode. And it looks like we have not taught our system how to make lapis blocks. That is completely fine. And boom, we have the fusion crafting core. Now to use it, we also need some of these fusion crafting injectors. Again, it seems we have not taught our system how to make iron blocks. Again, not a problem. And again, from there, we can make really as many of these as we like. The first thing that we're probably gonna do though is kind of straight away upgrade these draconium fusion crafting injectors up to wyvern fusion crafting injectors. And essentially the deal here is that different tiers of crafts require different tiers of fusion crafting injectors. 
And you can always use the higher tier injectors for lower tier crafts, but you can't do it the other way around. You can't do the uh, lower tier crafting injectors for higher tier crafts. And as you can see up at the top here, if we do want to be able to make this Chaos Fragment, the tier is Draconic, which I think is actually this tier right here. And then the Chaotic Fusion Crafting Injectors, I assume, um, are going to be used. Yeah, they're used right here for the Chaotic Capacitor. This does require the uh, Chaotic tier. And then from there, we can make the Creative Capacitor if we so wished. But essentially, the way this works is we place down the Fusion Crafting Core, and then we place the Fusion Crafting Injectors down around them. Now, in terms of making the next tier here, we need eight fusion crafting injectors because you need one per item that is required for the craft. And so, for example, here, this kind of would look better, I think, if we put it in the middle. So real quick, let me grab some kind of building block. And if we did something like this, we just kind of built this up. What we should be able to do is place down our fusion crafting core, like so, and then uh, gravel is not the best choice of block here. If we uh, instead, have I, oh no, I'm right clicking on the fusion crafting core, I see. If we instead uh, opt for something like cobblestone, what we should be able to do is kind of build these out. And you essentially just need to place these fusion crafting injectors down, uh, ideally pointing at the fusion crafting core. So uh, also annoyingly, these are a bit of a pain to break. That's not a problem though, really. Let's do this, this, this and this and then let's quickly break these guys right here i think these are fine they might be a tad too close but i think for the most part if we do something like this like this 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 and this i think we should be able to use those injectors to feed that fusion crafting core so let's go into the gravel and let's see about making this work now in order for this to work we do need to get power over to these fusion crafting injectors and then is where it's probably worth us looking at getting into the flux networks mod so flux networks is a mod that's going to allow us to wirelessly transfer power around the base in order to get started we need a flux plug and a flux point the flux point provides energy to adjacent blocks the flux plug removes energy from adjacent blocks. And so essentially, we can put the flux plug down onto the reactor to start pulling some of this power that we have. And then we can use the flux point to put that power into really anything we like, including, in our case, these fusion crafting injectors because they do require power. So for the flux plug and flux point, the main thing we're going to need is flux. We also need molten proton lava. This has been uh, changed this recipe is not the standard recipe you might be uh, surprised to hear the molten proto lava here is made in the smeltery with lava chorus and molten endo the molten endo we can do with eyes of endo or end crystals but eyes of endo are probably going to be easier then the molten chorus is just as you would expect chorus root and then lava should be fairly easy for us actually this doesn't seem too too bad and then in terms of flux dust this is just lava and nitro crystals it does require a superheated blaze burner to get the flux dust we can also in theory do this but we don't have access to any bedrock so this isn't currently an option for us this oh wait we might have access to bedrock now that i think about it is there bedrock down here oh there totally is in that case i think what we should be able to do is kind of get rid of this i don't know if this was intended then because there's a recipe for it but down here if we just put obsidian and redstone down we should be good to go, right? If I put one piece of obsidian down here and then a stack of redstone down here, I think we then like left click. You do, you left click the obsidian and it drops the obsidian down, turns it into cobblestone and gives you a stack of flux dust. Nice. From there, the flux dust does have an EMC. Fantastic, we'll throw that into our template. And at that point, we then just need to complete this recipe right here. Again, the flux cores, thankfully, do have an EMC value. And so let us go ahead and grab one bucket of lava. And you can just right click this into the drain, like so, and that goes right, uh, and that goes right into the smeltery. Uh, we do have some molten ender in there. I wonder if that's an enderman that's managed to, uh, to make its way in. In terms of eyes of ender, I'm fairly certain that we taught those to the system. We did indeed. And I don't think we're going to need that many of them to get the molten ender required. We need 250 millibuckets and each eye of ender gets us 250. So yeah, one eye of ender would have done the trick. And then the final piece of the puzzle here is just that uh, molten chorus. Do we have chorus fruit available? We do indeed. Let's take that and let's whack it in. Again, I don't foresee us needing that much, but we'll put a bit extra in. It looks like chorus fruit might require a higher 
temperature to melt it? Oh, never mind. It needs to be popped chorus fruit or chorus flowers, I see. In that case, we could pop the chorus fruit, but we do have chorus flowers available to us, and so it's probably easier for us to just do something like that. We can put the rest back away for now, and I think that should get us one bucket's worth of the molten proto lava, and then everything else we should have ready to go. So that should be everything we need. Nitro crystals have an EMC value, and so they're available over in here. Let me do a little bit of an inventory clear here, get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need to be carrying on us. So we want 16 nitro crystals. Perfect. We also want four flux dust and four obsidian. That is fine. Flux dust, one, two, three, four. And obsidian, we've already got one, two, three, four. Put the rest away. Over in here, are we good to go? We have got one bucket of proto lava. Nice. We can go ahead and just right click that out. Lovely. And then back over here, we uh, do need to empty out the current tank, like so. And then we'll put in the proto lava along with the nitro crystals, the obsidian, and the flux dust. And there we go. That gets us one flux core, which we can then throw into our tablet to make as many of them as we like. And that's basically everything I think that we need to make this happen because the flux point is just flux cores and redstone. Easy enough. The flux plug is just a flux block with more flux cores. The flux block is made with flux dust and flux cores. And so. Boom, that is also done. Let me do this and this. And then from there, we can just grab the one flux plug again. That's going to go down onto our reactor. Let's say right about here. And then the flux points, these guys right here, are going to go down on the back of our crafting injectors like this. And essentially what we need to do now is over inside of one of these devices, we need to click the big plus to create a new network. We will call this Gaming on Caffeine's network and we'll pick a color. We'll go for this kind of salmon-y pink. Uh, the password doesn't really matter. We'll call it GOC and click create. Then if we just select it, this plug is now connected to that network. Over here, we can then do the same. We can uh, click on this kind of empty box at the top, select the Gaming on Caffeine's network. And now this is also connected to the network and we'll provide power when this needs power. You'll see right now it's a zero out of zero, but this does need power, trust me. On top of that, if we make this uh, flux configurator, which we should be able to do via our tablet here, we can then, I believe, shift right click onto any item that's currently connected to our network. And then from there, we can kind of paste the settings to all of these flux points so that we don't have to go through and manually connect all of these individually to the network. We can kind of just copy and paste to all of them. And so now that that is taken care of, let's see if we can't make this uh, Wyvern Fusion Crafting Injector. For that, we do need, uh, bizarrely, one of the previous tier fusion crafting injectors. Not really that bizarre, given that we're basically upgrading it. Let's put you in the center, like this. And then, ooh, it says one or more injectors are too close. Okay, so annoyingly, I think I might have to move these kind of one block further out. And then we're going to put the uh, items required into each injector. So we're going to get four diamonds, two draconium cores, one wyvern core, and one draconium block. All of that stuff should be fairly straightforward. The only thing we don't have, I think, is the wyvern core which is just four draconium cores with another star and some draconium. Again, not too difficult once you have EMC and the ability to make infinite of them. And then over here, diamonds will take four of those as well. And let me quickly go ahead and just move these guys back one block. Okay, so I've moved all of the injectors back by one. And so now in here, it no longer has the error message. And whilst we could put these items in manually, so we could do, you know, one diamond here, one in here, one in here, one in here, what you can also do, as I've been told by the Twitch chat, is that uh, you can just shift click the recipe in. So uh, you can usually just click that little air there. If I try like this, why I'm missing? I'm missing, oh, a block of draconium, of course. Let me get a quick, oops, let me get that back, please. Thank you. And let's get a quick block of draconium. And we'll teach that as well, just so we have it for the future. And then now back in here, can I click move items? I can, and it moves all the items into the fusion crafting injectors. From there, we can click craft and you'll see it says charging. So now you'll see these are filling up with power, which is fantastic, 4,000 RF each. The amount that they fill up with is gonna depend on how much power the craft requires. In this case, it's only 32,000 uh, RF in total. And then once they do fill up with power, it's then gonna move from the charging section to the crafting section. And we're gonna get this uh, pretty nifty animation here as all of the uh, power flows through the fusion crafting injector and all the items get infused within that uh, center injector there in order to give us a Wyvern Fusion Crafting Injector. Nice. And so, in theory here, if we wanted to uh, to move up to the next tier, we would have to get seven of these Wyvern Fusion Crafting Injectors, because in order to make the Draconic Fusion Crafting Injectors, we need seven items, and this is a tier Wyvern. So we need to make 
seven of these and then have the eighth one to upgrade in order to upgrade to draconic and then for this craft here this is the the most horrible craft but to do this we need 54 is the actual number i said 52 earlier it's not quite right 54 is what we need we need 54 of these draconic fusion crafting injectors and so we're gonna have to get 54 wyvern fusion crafting injectors which means 54 draconium fusion crafting injectors it's really not too bad i think you can put basically a stack of each item into each slot for example here if i were to go ahead and get a stack of just the standard actually do these have any mc they don't that would have been far too easy if we get a stack of regular fusion crafting injectors we would then need to get a stack of each of the other items with two stacks of some items right so uh, for example we need a stack of draconian blocks we need two stacks of draconic cores one stack of wyvern cores which apparently I've not taught. Let me do that and get a stack of them. Perfect. And then finally, we would just need four stacks of diamonds. And I think one, two, three, four, that should be good to go. So over here, if I press U, can I move all the items in? I totally can. And then I can click craft. And I think it's just going to keep going. I think that will just kind of slowly but surely craft up all of the items that we need. I think you can speed up. I want to say the crafting section. So you can't speed up the charging section, annoyingly. That is just like a set speed. But if you accelerate the center block, then the crafting section can go faster, like that. And, oh, you do have to click craft. Interesting. Do we have a timer or a clock of some persuasion? You can make a redstone one, of course, which would also do the trick. But um, I think we might want to set some kind of, uh, of system here. I don't think that just having a lever down does the trick. Like pulling the lever will trigger it. And so uh, if we were to do, let's say something with the cobblestone, just so I can put the lever down. If we did something like this and pull the lever, it'll start the craft, but I think it will only do the craft once. I think we have to keep uh, flicking the lever in order to keep it going. And so we might want to look at setting up some kind of redstone clock to kind of continually trigger this over and over and over again. That's assuming that this um, lever situation doesn't work, which I don't think it will. Yeah, you gotta kind of flick it again for it to go again. Fair enough. And so that is how we're going to get our 54 Wyvern Fusion Crafting Injectors. And then uh, next time we can come back and we can look at getting 54 of the uh, Draconic Fusion Crafting Injectors. That's going to require that we uh, get a uh, Dragon Heart so we can make the Awakened Draconium. Thankfully, that does have an EMC. And so the uh, Dragon Heart here is uh, something that we get from fighting the Dragon. So we are going to have to head through to the end, fight the End Dragon, which I think is going to be incredibly easy with our armor and our sword and our ability to fly and then once we have that uh, dragon heart we can make awakened draconium once we have the awakened draconium and we have 54 draconium fusion crafting injectors we can then look at making the tiny chaos fragment thankfully as you can see in the top left there we have got 30.9 quadrillion emc and so now if we take away these four mark 15 power flowers i think that we finally have what it takes to actually make the final tier of power flower for that we need the final star shard which is gonna be a bit of a pain to make here because in order to get the final let me bookmark this in order to get the final star shard which we do have to get of course we need these for the uh infinity catalyst as well but to make that we have to take our highest tier star which is currently the magnum star iron and we have to continue the uh, the craft upwards here so we craft the the zwei and then we take the zwei and we craft the dry and then we take the dry and we craft the via and you kind of just keep doing this as we go up and eventually if we do this for long enough we should get all the way up to the colossal star omega at which point we should then be able to craft the final star shard and there we go colossal star omega into final star shard which should be everything for the final energy collector and the final relay and that should be everything for the final tier power flower 48 trillion emc per second i think we're actually going to be producing less emc per second now that we've done the upgrade though because wait is that right power flower this one right here produces 19 trillion oh no Oh, no, I'm just misread, I misread this. Oh, no, never mind. This one here produces 19 billion EMC per second. I thought it was 19 trillion. It's not, it's 19 billion. And so uh, I guess it's kind of worth it. We've got an order of magnitude increase here now to where we're producing five quadrillion EMC per second. Absolute madness. And so uh, going forward, this is actually completely fine. If I type in uh, Power Flower, you'll see that uh, actually if I type in Final, we should see that uh, we can fairly soon make more. Oh, I didn't even teach this, I think is the problem. Hold on, let me take this. Let me do this and let's type in final 
you'll see, yeah, we can make eight of these now, which is, is just insane. It's just absolute madness. We don't need, I don't think, this much EMC. I don't think we need to be generating uh, 20 quadrillion EMC per second, if not more. You know, we could double that up easily, and the, the number of power flowers that we can make now is just insane. And so, yeah, we probably don't need to keep the watchers on anymore for EMC, but I am going to keep the watchers on because I want to generate more antimatter. We're at 2,600. We need much closer to 30,000 if we're going to get this done. And so uh, we can leave this going for now, but we might also want to look at setting up either more generators or more reprocessors. I think both would help with increasing the uh, the production of antimatter here. But basically now, next time we can come back, we can fight the end dragon and we can work on getting these chaos shards, which I think should be fine. We can also do a bit of crafting here in terms of getting all the different components required to make all of that happen. But I think that the big goal that we now have is kind of just finishing the pack because uh, let me unbookmark all of these here. Our big goal now is going to be getting the infinity ingot and to get the infinity ingot, for the most part, it's just getting all of the ingots that we've kind of made so far in the game, as well as a few other rogue ingots that we've yet to make, like these uh, kind of alloys between unobtainium and all the modium or vibranium and all the modium. I think those are going to be easy enough. And there's also a few ingots from Mystical Agriculture, which I think are going to be fairly easy as well. They do require the uh, Draconic Fusion Crafting, uh, but that's also not too big of an issue. And then we also have to, of course, craft these Infinity Catalysts, which do require a few uh, rogue items that we've yet to make. But for the most part, I don't think... This looks terribly bad. We are also going to have to get some neutronium compressors in order to start making the singularities, but we only need to make four infinity catalysts to get one infinity ingot, and then that one infinity ingot is then infinite infinity ingots, and from there, I think we're um, we're very close to the end of the pack. So for the most part, I think we're not too far away, and yeah, next time we'll come back and we'll start working towards getting this infinity ingot, but of course, as always, all of that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Project Sacrifice there.